Would you like to give your kitchen a fresh new look without breaking the bank? Well, in today's video, I'll show you how I created the kitchen of my dreams without spending a lot of money. I'll show you some simple and affordable updates like painting the cabinets, swapping out the hardware, and installing a peel and stick backsplash. I'll also show you how to incorporate thrift store finds and repurpose decor to create a one of a kind space full of personality and character. My dream kitchen is right over there. I think you'll be amazed at the transformation that's possible with just a few budget friendly DIYs. So let's get started. Before I get into the makeover, I wanted to remind you of what my kitchen looked like before. As you can tell, these videos were taken just after Christmas. My cabinets are maple and had been stained a light to medium shade, which I was never very fond of. To break up all the brown cabinetry, I had painted my island a few years ago in a dark gray color. As you can see, I have a ton of cabinetry to paint, and if you watched last week's video, you know that I also painted my bookcases. So I enlisted the help of a professional painter to spray my kitchen cabinets. Just taping and papering everything off in preparation of painting is a full day's job. The doorways to the basement, the family room, and the dining room were sealed off with Visqueen to keep any paint dust from settling in those adjoining rooms. The painter even set up a ventilation system to pull the fumes outdoors. If I had done this all by myself, I would definitely have waited until warmer weather. I decided to go with a two-tone kitchen. I painted the uppers in a creamy white to coordinate with the woodwork in the connecting family room. And I painted the lowers a very dark navy blue, the same color as I had used on the bookcases. Rather than buying all new knobs and handles, which would have been quite pricey, I decided to age some solid brass ones that I already had. The first step in aging brass is to remove the protective lacquer coating. Soak your knobs or handles in acetone or nail polish remover for about a half an hour. Then the lacquer should rub right off. At this point, you can let the handles age naturally, or you can speed the process up by submersing them in brass ager for about a minute. If you get them too dark, you can easily remove some of the tarnish with a metal polish like Brasso. But I love how mine turned out. I think it is just such a classic and classy look. I especially love them on the navy blue cabinets. One of the things that I love most about making videos for you guys is the opportunity to share new and unique home decor ideas. So I am so excited to tell you that I have launched my own online store called Canterbury Cottage Shop. I hope it will be a treasure trove of vintage and thrift store finds and one of a kind handcrafted items. My goal is to create a collection of beautiful and inspiring pieces that will help you to create a home that is a true reflection of your personal style. It's still a work in progress, but it's up and running. So if you would like to check it out, I'll leave a link in the description box, or you can go directly to CanterburyCottageShop.com. I hope you'll check it out and let me know what you think. I have always wanted a brick backsplash. So, for an inexpensive and easy option, I ordered some sample 3D brick peel and stick tiles. 
I really wanted the red ones, but I settled on the brown ones because I felt like they coordinated best with my multicolored granite countertops. First, I cleaned my existing tile backsplash really well with a degreaser. I planned my layout and decided that in this particular area, it was best to start with a tile in the exact center. I peeled the backing off of the first tile and adhered it to the wall. And then I peeled off the backing of the second tile, lined up the seams, and adhered it to the wall. The tiles came with a plastic scraper, which I used after adhering each individual tile. I went over the tile, scraping it to make sure that it was firmly applied to the wall. I also used the edge to go along the grout lines to make sure that they were also firmly adhered to the wall. When I had a tile that needed to be cut, I first cut off the majority of the extra tile with a pair of scissors. Then I removed the backing and firmly adhered the tile to the wall. Then I came back in with a sharp utility knife and cut away any other extra tile that was remaining. For the backsplash on either side of my stove, I was actually able to cut the tiles with scissors to fit perfectly under the cabinets without having to use a utility knife at all. I knew the most difficult part of this project was going to be working around the corbels of my range hood, and I didn't do a very good job of planning the layout of my tiles. As you can see, I had to adhere some very small pieces of tile to fill in spaces. If I could do this over, I would have started applying the tiles in the area of the corbels instead of against the outer wall. I think these tiles look really good from a distance, but up close you can definitely notice the seams. My husband doesn't like it, so I'd love to know what you guys think. With the cabinets and backsplash done, I was ready to move on to decor. Painting switch and outlet plates is a simple and inexpensive upgrade that can make a big difference in the look and feel of a room. I spray painted mine gold to coordinate with the brass handles and knobs. Be sure to spray paint the screws too. I painted my built-in china cabinet all white, and it was looking so fresh and bright with all of my strawberry dishes, so I wanted to create some strawberry art to hang on the walls. I found these vintage strawberry images online, and I printed them out on cardstock in a size to fit in these thrift store frames. First, I removed the paper backing, and then I used a flathead screwdriver to pry up the staples that were holding the print inside. Although it looks like there is a gingham mat, it is actually just part of the print. So I applied a good quality glue stick over the center image, and then adhered my strawberry print on top of that. Then I put the print inside the frame and folded down the staples. I like to use Velcro to hang art on a tile backsplash, so I removed the existing sawtooth hangers from the frames. Then I adhere a small strip of the fuzzy side of Velcro to the back side of the frame, and I adhere the scratchy side of the Velcro where I want the frame to hang on the wall. It's important to wait at least 15 minutes before hanging up the wall art to make sure that the adhesive has fully set. To finish off this area, I added some springy flowers and some false graft canisters to hold my coffee supplies.
prior to applying the peel and stick tiles, I had measured and written down the location of a plastic anchor in my backsplash so that I could return the screw that had been there to hang a cutting board. Luckily, I could feel the plastic anchor with my finger so that I didn't make an unnecessary hole in my new backsplash. I recently picked up some vintage trivets that I wanted to upcycle for some unique wall decor. If you've seen my bedroom makeover, then you know I love antique Delft tiles. I printed out several of the Delft tile images on regular copy paper in a size to cover the tiles in my trivets. I applied Mod Podge both to the tile and to the back of the paper and then adhered the paper to the tile, carefully smoothing out any wrinkles. I wasn't sure that the copy paper would cover some of the bright colors on the original tiles, but I was surprised to discover that it worked just fine. Once the Mod Podge was completely dry, I applied a second top coat of Mod Podge. Keep in mind that I am only going to use these as decor. Otherwise, I would probably seal them with polyurethane. To hang the trivets vertically, I used a level to draw a straight perpendicular line along my cabinet. Then I spaced my nails out evenly along that line. Once I had the nails in the cabinet, then I went back with a white eraser and erased that level line. To create some additional custom wall art, I repeated the process that I had used when I created the strawberry art. I took some thrift store frames, removed the paper backing, pried up the staples that held the print or artwork inside the frame, and removed it. After searching for images that I liked in the public domain, I printed them out on cardstock in sizes to fit inside my thrift store frames. Sometimes I just pop the print into the frame and other times I use glue stick to adhere my new image over the original print. I also like to attach brown paper tape around the edges on the back side just to make sure that the staples stay put. If I was going to sell this, I would also cover the back with brown paper to give it a clean, professional look. I wanted to incorporate a few gold elements in the kitchen to coordinate with the brass handles and knobs. So I decided to apply a little gold wax to this rather ordinary brown frame. I just brushed it on with a somewhat stiff paintbrush and wiped off the excess. To refresh my countertop decor, I knew that I needed to remove the green items and incorporate more blue items to highlight the blue cabinets. I found a dark wood paper towel holder in my stash, and I spray painted my green napkin holder with matte black spray paint. In all honesty, I was really struggling to find the right decor that made sense with the connecting library and the blue and white decor of the adjoining dining room. I thought I might like to have a lamp on the counter because I've always liked that cozy look. And once I found a small lamp in my stash, all the countertop decor came together. And now, finally, I can show you my dream kitchen.
Thank you so very much for watching today. And if you want more ideas for making over your kitchen without painting the cabinets, here's another video you may like. Mm -hmm.